So we're going to talk today about delay effects, known kind of more colloquially as an echo. And that's what it is, right? You hit one uh, note and it, and it kind of repeats. It uh, it echoes. <laughs> if you feed any sound into it, you'll get the same thing, right? It's uh, it's an audio effect, not a MIDI effect, right? And we're going to talk today a few different ways, kind of, that these can work, and the difference between analog style and digital style delays and what the effects are. Okay, so a digital style delay, notice how I tweak this. Okay, and we're gonna switch over to the keys, which has a more we're going to switch over to the keys, which has a more analog style effect. I believe this is a digital implementation. I can show you also my actual analog delay pedal. But, so we got this tone here. It's more steady, right? You can't really get it to do that same kind of glitching. Uh, it's more like that driving a car kind of motor sound that you get out of this. And I'll show you why on paper. Okay, and just to kind of do a fact check or a, a reality check here, here's an actual analog delay from the 80s. The sad one, it's spared no expense, it's very plasticky. But it works. I, I believe it's the clone of the boss, whatever the boss one was at the time. Okay. And, you know, you can get this to make some pretty weird feedback if you can get kind of into a state where it's... There's enough noise in the system. If you hook a bunch of other pedals to it, it'll start doing it. Anyway. So, you might ask, how do we actually do this in software? And, okay, so... The, the most naive way possible to do this is you have a line with a bunch of samples in it and the audio goes in and these copy down the line, down this conveyor belt, eventually spitting out the end. And however many samples is at whatever rate your delay time. Well, this is a very simple implementation but it's also very slow because you're just copying so much memory and so the next thing you can do you say well okay what if instead of the uh you, you know the audio moving through this array what if just the, the the you have like a playhead and a right head like on a tape recorder and that moves right um so you would have, let's say, a read and a write head that kind of goes here and it loops around and as it's moving along, it's writing, it's writing out new data. It's writing out new audio, you know, as, as this thing moves, right? It's picking up the old one and writing out the new one. And as it hits the end, it loops around. And there you go. Uh, that's another way of doing a delay line. Uh, unfortunately, what, you know, it has a few problems. So if you want a shorter delay, you would, you would wrap it, let's say you wrap it here. 
what happens though if you want to modulate the delay and get those cool effects? I mean, this is fine for set it and forget it, but if you want the kind of thing that we were doing with a knob, uh, this poses some problems. So, for instance, let's say you're right reading around and you want to suddenly lengthen the delay. Boom. Well, what is the data in here that you've just suddenly exposed? It's going to be either zero or junk. Um, this all just makes it very hard to uh, really do a nice delay with just one pointer. I'm going to show you something better. So the third, our third attempt here is going to be that we never cut the delay line short. The This array is our maximum delay time, right? Uh, forget that. <laughs> and we have this right pointer going this way and a read trailing behind it. So this is writing, this is, this is putting on audio and this is picking up, picking up the slack. And the distance between these two is your delay time. But wh why is this any better? Well, if you're gonna modulate the delay, you're just kind of picking up slack or releasing it, going, you know, you're going like this as, as this is moving. And the data that you're getting is valid data. You're just kind of speeding up and slowing down time. Uh, and that's really cool. Okay, so you might be asking, okay, well, we got one echo, but we didn't really talk about those repeated echoes. What is that? So that is what you might call feedback, or what it is called feedback. And in the simplest form, um, you know, we're going to draw it out like this. And this is not going to talk about how this delay line is implemented. And this is a multiplication. This is turning down or turning up your signal. Right. Uh, we're going to talk about how this is implemented. That's not the delay line itself. That's not part of uh, this section. Uh, we're just going to talk about these different patterns and what it does to your repeated echoes. So, in this form, it goes. The audio goes through here. We're adding whatever is coming out of the, of the delay line, and then we're feeding it back. And before it hits this again, we're multiplying it. We're turning it down by whatever your feedback amount that you want is that that kind of controls how many echoes you want right um and there's a problem with this though uh this is efficient but as you turn down the feedback you turn down the delay line uh basically the dry wet uh, the wet signal gets turned down uh so you know fewer echoes comes with having just a fainter echo to begin with okay so there's a better way of doing this. Not that. <laughs> uh, so we start out and we have this delay line. I was going to go through this and out the other side. Uh, and then our feedback is going to be over here. Right? And that's the number of repeats. Meanwhile, we're going to feed the direct signal down this way. Sum it up here. So this kind of skips the delay line. This is your dry signal. And this is your your wet is coming in here. Um, it's getting combined here. It's getting mixed in there. Uh, and then we want to alter the amount of dry wet. So what we really want to do is put, turn it down here. And that's your wet amount. You can also have it on the dry as well and kind of balance them, you know, like that. But uh, that's kind of the, the basic idea is that now your wet signal and your feedback are totally independent. This is coming into the delay line full blast. And that's kind of nice. Uh, it's a little bit slower, just, just like, uh, you know, every feature you add makes it a little bit slower, right? Like if we want a delay line that doesn't warp, that you can't manipulate, that is faster then a delay line that nicely kind of, um, you know, lets you do weird tweaks and effect and lets you glitch it out in a pleasing way, you know, that needs two pointers instead of one, you know, like we saw earlier. So, uh, but you know, these are all design decisions and trade-offs and uh, it's kind of what makes this stuff fun. Okay, well, that's all well and good, but what about that analog kind of behavior? So before we can make an analog style 
delay, we've got to understand what goes into an analog style delay. So I want to talk a little bit about what goes into a bucket brigade device. That's an analog delay. It's called a bucket brigade because it's kind of like, um, you know, a bunch of uh, people passing buckets down the line. And it's basically a bunch of capacitors that work like a, like a primitive sampler. So <laughs> here you go. Here's a, uh, a bucket brigade. And this is a great page, by the way. Uh, goes in a lot, a lot of detail here. Uh, so yeah, they're, they, they're generally about, you know, 1024 buckets or 40,096 buckets. Uh, and it talks about how much these leak. Uh, these capacitors bleed into each other. So you have a lot of distortion and strange things, including the uh, the clock signal uh, on this board. These boards uh, are audible. So they basically clobber the crap out of this with, with a, um, a, a low-pass filter. Uh, so here's here's how theirs go. Uh, they've got this mixer, right? These, these are the summers that you know in our block diagram. They compress the signal a lot and boost it a lot, so that uh, these dirty buckets that that the audio is going to be in that that leak uh, and bleed. They uh, you know you're preserving as much of the signal as possible. Then you you clobber the highs. It goes to the the bucket brigade device. That's your actual delay line. So another thing about bucket brigade delays is they've got this clock and the clock ticks along and instead of, so in a digital delay, the delay length is done by the distance between the read and the write heads, like we said, or the length of, of how many samples the delay line is. Uh, this always has the same number of buckets. It's just that the clock ticks at different rates. So you're kind of speeding up and slowing down the sampling rate as you're changing the delay line, which actually introduces some interesting uh, artifacts as well. And coming out, you have all the stair stepping. So, you know, we talked in the first video about uh, digital sampling and, and how it doesn't really stair step. Uh, and that's thanks to a lot of the really complex electronics in a DAC. Well, this doesn't have that. Uh, so you're going to get rid of the stair steps by just killing, you just kill the highs. And then you put it through an expander, kind of a reverse compressor, try to get as much of the signal, uh, the dynamics back as you can. <laughs> and there you go. Um, it is literally uh you know that warm sound they'll tell you here uh this is right from the horse's mouth they're trying to sell you a pedal uh analog pedal the was craft that's i i think the markup is like 200 percent uh and even they're saying that the uh you, you know the warm sound of analog it's really due to, due to a lot of the limitations and strangeness and and um you know uh here we go here, here's the here's the money the characteristic warm, smooth, and organic sound of an analog delay is actually due to its limitations and not because of any mystic mojo in a chip. Yeah, it's not the Bucket Brigade chip. I, I don't believe that would really affect, you know, the character as much as your compressors, your filters, how these are tuned, how many stages they are, all that stuff, uh, the other parts of the design. Um, you know, so that's, that's what they're saying. Uh, it's a great example of how an effect can inspire a whole generation of music and artists, even though it isn't technically a perfect design. See, I mean, one, one great thing about analog are all the happy accidents, all this, all this the strange behavior that's so hard to replicate in digital. But we're going to try today. Uh, we're going to try to do this, uh, knowing kind of how they work. I'm not going to do the compressor stage or the expander stage, uh, but we're going to kind of, uh, kind of reproduce uh, a very vague version of this. So let's let's get to it. Well, what you might do. And what we're going to do to make a little analog delay line is instead of having so these pointers are always going at the same speed whatever this whatever the sampling rate is these are going at it uh that's fine but what we want instead is actually we're not going to do the bucket of a grade today um but i'll keep this video um what we want instead is something where we have we're going to go back to kind of this model but to change the delay length we're not going to cut the delay line short like this we're going to slow down the right head that's your modulating and that is going to stretch out and you know compress the the recording itself that's in the delay line and that accounts for the difference in behavior because when you're modulating this one it's only as long as you're moving the the knob that's the, the, kind of the amount you're moving it accounts for the the warping and this is you know different where it's actually recording the warped audio um, 
Well, this, of course, is back into the line, too. I'm not explaining this well, but uh, play with this on paper for a bit. You'll see what I mean, uh, where you've actually written in a stretched-out version of the audio into this delay line. It's just a different effect. Okay, so we're going to uh, talk about how to actually do this in code. Uh, we're going to start with um, the example code. Uh, I started with the example code from Steinberg. If you get the VST SDK 2.4 version, uh, 2.4 is uh, used more widely than their uh, three version three series. Um, I'm sure I'm sure they're not stoked about that, but that's the that's how it, the cookie crumbles. Um, so anyway, it comes with this delay, delay effect called a delay, and it's it's a pretty uh, I modified it a, a bit. Uh, and we're going to look at this processing call. And if you remember from the other videos I've done, uh, it's very similar. So uh, what you get uh, in th this plugin format is you get uh, a, an array of an array of inputs, an array of an, of an array of outputs, and then how many it wants spat back. Okay, uh, so this is my code. And this is their code. We're going to look at theirs first because it's a bit simpler. And you'll, you'll notice it's in a bit of a different style than mine. And I kind of try to keep their general style when I, when I modify it. But, uh, you know, X comes in. Uh, so that's that's your input. It comes in here into X. Y is picking up from that buffer, from that delay line. Um, and then it's moving cursor head. That's what the plus plus is. It's moving the cursor head. But before it does that, it's saying, well, we're gonna re we, we got we, we've captured what's already in the buffer in Y, but we're gonna we, we're gonna pick it up and then replace it by whatever's coming in plus whatever that loopback is. That's you know whatever was in the buffer times that feedback. Um, and I know I'm going a bit fast, but if you parse this out and really go slow on it, you'll you'll figure it out. Um, and then over here, they're saying, well, if we're get to the end of the delay line, wrap around, you know. Uh, and this is a very, not the very first model, it's not the bucket naive implementation, but it is the, the implementation doesn't work very nicely. Uh, and that's not due to, to it being a digital style, that's due to it being just having one pointer and not two. Um, and of course then you say the output, uh, which is coming in here, these are, these are the stereo outs, uh, is equal to Y, which is what we got out of the buffer. And you know what? This is weird because uh, I don't believe you get the, you get the dry signal at all. Uh, it's, it's a bit strange. But anyway, um, I modified it here. So I made this analog style delay. Uh, yeah, and it, this isn't great code. This is I did this really quick. So, you know, uh, there's stuff that isn't uh, sample rate independent. So, you know, don't just copy this and be like, oh, I have a cold delay. Uh, but we're just using this to illustrate, right? So you, you're going through this buffer, you know, as, just like down here. Uh, and by the way, F0 means this stuff does not happen. This is all commented out. Okay, uh, we're only looking, this is only gonna execute this. And that's just there for illustration, uh, their old code is. So, okay, look, looking at mine, we get X is equal to the input, just like theirs. We get Y is equal to whatever's in the buffer, just like theirs, wherever the cursor position is. But the big difference, the big difference with mine, well, first off, uh, yeah, uh, is that uh, we have a delta. Like with an oscillator, uh, we're moving this pointer, the cursor, through the buffer at different rates. And yeah, that's gonna repeat, um, it's going to repeat samples. This comment is, is, is uh, the delta is never greater than one in this model uh, because we'd have these gaps and we'd have to then repeat to make up for it. And I don't want to bother with that. So I limit delta from like, it's like from, you know, very close to zero to one. Um, and if the, uh, the uh, cursor is gets to the end, uh, we wrap it, right? Okay. And I, add, I pump up uh, the output a little bit because it's a very dark, very filtered output. I put a filter here. You, you probably noticed. Uh, we, I said we're going to talk about filters in the next lesson, uh, the, pre the last time, and we were actually are talking, talking about filters. Uh, a delay line is a kind of filter. You've already written, if you've written something like the, the, like not like this, but like the basic digital delay, you've written a filter. And I can get into why that counts as a fil filter, but uh, we're going to keep it simple today. Uh, where, where was I? 
<laughs> totally getting lost here. But uh, yeah, it's just uh, we're pumping up the volume because it's a very dark, very filtered out sound, just like the real analog pedal. It, has a, it just actually has the same annoyances and limitations of a real analog delay where there's a little bit of a distortion, not all of it, but a little bit of it, or the darkness, it's, it's all here. Okay, well, let's go over to my VST host, load this up and see how it sounds. My delay loaded over here, a delay, <laughs> which is 64 bit, because of course it has to be. <laughs> you need all that memory for our 4,000 sample delay line, right? <laughs> but uh, here we go. Th this is gonna exhibit the same behavior as an analog delay. Watch this. Oh. Let's turn the feedback up. Okay, so there you go. That's a that's the analog delay line. An, an, sorry, analog style delay line that we just made. Uh, there's a few improvements you could make. So you know, we we really went for the analog model, so we're clobbering the highs really kind of viciously. Uh, you could use interpolation to get analog style behavior and digital style crispness if that's what you desire. Uh, there's a lot of things you, you could really do with this. Uh, just you know, it's all about the creativity, right? Before you go, I've got one quick correction to the code I was showing earlier. Uh, so you might be looking at, you know, noticing it, it's a little bit different. And what's different here is that I added a hold sample. So before when we weren't clocking it out, we were rewriting over and over the same bucket and it just got more and more filtered and muddy. And I don't know, I don't think about this because I don't know if that's actually more accurate or uh, if it's supposed to be like this, uh, something to think about. Uh, and, you know, I do these tutorials pretty quick. Uh, so, I don't know, if anybody wants me to do a follow-up and do more research, I'd, I'll do that. <laughs> and otherwise, I guess next time we'll be uh, getting more into filters. And like I said before, a delay line is a kind of filter. And you might be asking why, and I'll explain that next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.